So let's get started. Let's pick the first data set that we have. Let's see the accidents that happened on a highway in a year. So what this data tells us is the different months in a year from January to December, the number of accidents that took place on a particular highway. Let's see what how we can represent this data on a graph in the most useful way, right? What are we most likely to want to know out of this information? Typically, what we would want to know is how the accidents compare across the months. So something that helps you compare quantities would be a useful way to represent this, correct? So what is the easiest way to try and compare quantities? Let's take an example. Suppose you are given these two boxes filled with books. The boxes look to be of the same size, but clearly this one has more books than this one. This looks more filled up, right? But how much more? It's very hard to say looking at it as the books lie in the box. What would be a more useful way for us to help figure out which box has more books and how many more books? Maybe we could stack them up. All the books are individually of the same size. So if we stack these books up, we'll probably be able to compare better. So let's try and stack them up, right? So what you see is this stack of books comes right up to here and this stack is only up to here. Now you can very clearly see that box one has almost double the number of books that box two has. If you take a ruler and measure the height, you'll be able to say exactly how many more books there are, correct? Or if you were to count the books. The books in the box were haphazard, right? It was like a num like numbers just all around. When we neatly stacked them up, it was much easier to measure quantities. That's what you would practically do in such a scenario, right? You can do the exact same thing with the numbers that are given to us. We we'll try and stack the accidents up. So January has six accidents. Let's stack them up. Think of each accident to be a book, right? So I have accident one, two, three, four, five, and six in January. February has nine accidents. So we have nine books. Let's stack them up. Comes up to here and so on. You can actually stack up all of these. If you think of each accident as a book, you can stack up all of these books. Now it's very easy to compare. You can clearly see that April was the month when the accidents were the highest. November was the month with the least number of accidents. You can very clearly compare the quantities and suddenly it's far easier to start making sense of this data. So this is definitely a useful way to represent the data. Now, instead of visualizing these as books, we can make them into bars. At the end of the day, what is it? This January is nothing but a bar or a rectangle of a height six. February is nothing but a bar or a rectangle of height nine and so on. If I draw an axis here with a ruler kept next to it, Right, a ruler kept next to it, which means that it is an axis which helps you measure what the length is. So you can clearly see that January comes at six, right? So there were six accidents in January, nine accidents in February, and so on. What we call this is a bar graph. What we call this is a bar graph. It is simply taken from the concept that if you had to compare quantities, you it's easy to stack them up and look at the heights of the two. That's exactly what we've used. So this is what you call as a bar graph. What it helps you do is very easily compare quantities by comparing the heights between the different bars. It helps you see which is the smallest bar, right? So when were the minimum accidents? You can easily see that November is the shortest bar. So that was when there were the least number of accidents. You can clearly see that April tallest bar. So that was the month with the most number of accidents. Now, if you pick another of the data set that we had, which was the different modes of transport that students use to get to school. Some students come by car, some of them by the school bus, some of them use a public transport, some of them walk it up, but some of them come by bicycles. So different ways, right? Again, if we were to compare, this is just five different quantities, right? So it's quite easy to compare in a table as well. It was harder in the previous case because there were 12 months, right? If I made it two years, if there were 24 months, it would be even more difficult. So as the size of your data set increases, the graph becomes more and more useful because it is more and more difficult to make any sense of the data in a table. You have a large data set, you try and combine it in a way that makes it easy for you to understand. So take a large data set and actually make it smaller or put it in a form that is easier to understand. So we can see here that 30 students come to school by car. So if one student is one book using our same analogy for car, if I write car here, there would be 30 books. Now, public transport is used by 50 students. So public transport would be 50 books. 
Bicycle is used by only 10 students, so only 10 books. The next you have is the school bus. School bus is the maximum. There are 98 students that use the school bus. So that is going to be the highest chart that you have there. So you've picked all of your data and represent it on a bar chart. This is what we call as bar graphs. They make it very easy, like I said, for us to compare quantities, identify the least, the most, and so on. Start making sense of the data. If you like this video and want to watch many, many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.